If you like our video, click the button to subscribe to our channel and get easy access to new content. To see our full suite of ad-free video courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides, visit us at www.teachucomp.com. You keep information about the companies and people from whom you purchase goods or services in the Vendors tab within the Vendor Center. In QuickBooks, you keep parts supply vendors, utility companies, subcontractors, and more within this list. The list of vendors tends to be one of the larger lists you maintain. QuickBooks uses the information you enter to fill out purchase orders, bills, and checks as you make purchases for your company. You can open the Vendor Center by selecting Vendors, Vendor Center from the menu bar. To access the Vendors tab within the Vendor Center, click the Vendors tab at the left side of the Vendor Center window. You can add vendors, edit vendor information, and inactivate or delete vendors within this tab. To add a new vendor to this tab, click the New Vendor button in the upper left corner of the Vendor Center, and then select the New Vendor Choice from the drop-down menu to open the New Vendor window. Start by typing a unique name for this vendor into the Vendor Name field. If adding a vendor to whom you owed money as of the start date of your company, then enter the Total Amount Outstanding into the Opening Balance field, and select your company file's start date from the adjacent As of Calendar Selector field. You only perform this task when initially adding vendors to whom you owed money as of the start date of your company file. If creating a vendor to whom you did not owe money as of your company file's start date, then skip the opening balance and the as of fields. Next, click the Address Info tab in the New Vendor window. Enter the company name of the vendor into the Company Name field. If the vendor is an individual, then enter the person's information into the Mr. Ms., First, Middle, Initial, and Last Name fields. Enter the vendor's job title into the Job Title field. Then enter the vendor contact information you want to record into the next eight fields available. There are eight data field choices shown by default. However, for each field, you can select what data to record by choosing the name of a data field from the drop-down field label shown. Then record the associated vendor information within the adjacent data field to the right of each drop-down field label. The data fields shown by default are, from top to bottom and left to right, main phone, work phone, mobile, fax, main email, CC email, website, and other one. Your choices of alternate fields for which you can substitute the default information are Home Phone, Alt Phone, Alt Mobile, Alt Fax, Alt Email 1, Alt Email 2, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, URL 1, URL 2, URL 3, URL 4, Skype ID, Other 2, and Other 3. In the Address Details section at the bottom of this tab, you can enter Build From and Shipped From address information for the vendor. You can type the vendor's billing address directly into the Build From field, or click the Edit button to the right of the Build From field, and then enter the billing address into the fields within the Edit Address Information window that appears. If you enter the address information into the Edit Address Information window, then click the OK button when finished to display the address you entered within the Build From field. If the Shipped From address is the same as the Build From address you entered, Click the Copy button to copy the billing information into the Shipped From field to the right. If they are not the same, then enter the shipping address into the Shipped From field. To continue entering vendor information, click the Payment Settings tab at the left side of the new vendor window. On this tab, enter the default purchasing information from the vendor. You can enter the account number assigned by this vendor if the vendor gives you an account number by entering it into the Account Number field. This number will print in the memo field of checks you remit to this vendor. If the vendor assigns you a credit limit, enter your credit limit amount into the credit limit field. Next, use the payment terms drop-down field to select the default purchasing terms you have been assigned. You can enter the name of the vendor as you want it to appear on checks you issue to the vendor into the print name on check as field. After entering the vendor's payment information on this tab, click the tax settings tab to continue. On this tab, you can enter the vendor's tax ID number for 1099 subcontractors into the Vendor Tax ID field. If the vendor is eligible for a 1099, check the Vendor Eligible for 1099 checkbox. After entering any vendor tax information, click the Account Settings tab to continue. 
On the Account Settings tab, you can enter vendor account pre-fill information. You can enter up to three accounts, most commonly expense or cost of goods accounts, that can appear automatically when you enter a bill from this vendor. These accounts will appear within the Accounts column in the bill if you select this vendor record when entering a bill. This can save time if you always attribute amounts from a particular vendor to the same accounts. For example, if entering your telephone company as a vendor, you could select the telephone expense account from the first drop-down on this tab to have that account automatically appear when entering a bill from this vendor in the future. After entering any account prefill information for the vendor, click the Additional Info tab to continue. On the Additional Info tab, you can use the Vendor Type drop-down to select a vendor type, or you can enter a new vendor type directly into the Vendor Type field. This allows you to classify and categorize vendors for reporting purposes. At the right side of the Additional Info tab, you can enter any custom field values for custom fields you have created for your vendors. We will cover creating custom fields for your QuickBooks lists in a separate lesson of this chapter. After you have finished entering the vendor information, click the OK button to save the new vendor record and close the window. To cancel the creation of the vendor record instead, simply click the Cancel button to cancel your changes and close the window. To edit existing vendor records, to add missing information, or otherwise change the vendor records, first select the name of the vendor to change within the Vendors tab in the Vendor Center. Then either double-click the name shown in the vendor's list, or click the Edit button at the right of the Vendor Information section to the right of the vendor's list to open the Edit Vendor window. Make whatever changes are needed in the tab shown in this window, and then click the OK button to save the record. Like all QuickBooks lists, you cannot delete a record once you have used it in a transaction. After a record is associated with a transaction, you can only inactivate the record to hide it from view. You should review the Lesson 3.8, Inactivating and Reactivating List Items, to learn how to perform this task in your QuickBooks lists. However, if you created a vendor record but did not use it in any transactions, you can delete the record from the vendor's list. To do this, select the record to delete from the list, and then select Edit, Delete Vendor from the menu bar. You will need to click OK in the confirmation message box that appears to permanently delete the vendor record. Remember to click the subscribe button to see more of our videos. See our full suite of courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides at www.teachucomp.com.